Okay, so this is my setup. This is where I put my camera on that arm there. It's attached to my countertop. Eh, I gotta do vacuuming after. <laughs> Already have my vacuum out. And some laundry to fold. And this is my art easel. And then I wanna show you the, let me see if I can do that without throwing the canvas on the floor. But this is the light pad. And then you can, you know, turn it on three different um, brightness. And then I have this clip that I hold my canvas. I'll attach it again. But so this is the canvas that we're working on. And I decided to start at that corner. Okay, so now I'll put you on the stand that I just show you and we'll start diamond painting. Okay, so we are back and we're gonna keep working on Blue Zion from Diamond Art Club. It is a 55 by 55 and it is a square diamond, or sorry, a round diamond painting. Now, if you see this, I just put that there so I could put my hand on it. Um, I know I could have started on the other side of the painting and worked my way back, but with my camera and the way I could angle it, I figured this would be the best way. And this is from another diamond painting that I finished. I keep the paper and then it won't, uh, I won't stick my hand on it. So that'll work for now. So the color that we're gonna start with is this one, the next one that's not filled up and it is a percentage sign and that was 3608 and it's this cute little baby pink. And I have quite a bit here to put diamonds on, like a little section. There's this line right here, but then there's all this that goes down. And if I need to move this, like to see if there's any, I'll do that. Another reason I wanted to use this instead of the clear is this doesn't crinkle as much. The clear cover crinkles a lot. So it's a few days later. Uh, the last time I worked on this was on Tuesday, I believe, and today is Friday, and it is April 12th, and you'll see this next Wednesday. I'm trying to um, get back to uploading quite a bit on YouTube like I used to before. I'm feeling much better, full of energy. I don't know if it's like because spring is here, Yesterday was a gorgeous day, gorgeous, gorgeous day. Not that I saw it. The two nicest day that we've had up to now, I've worked both days and I'm part-time. <laughs> and it just happens that I work both days that were beautiful, like in the teens. And in, I'm in Canada, so it's like Celsius. So uh, the first time that I was working, it made it up to like 16 degrees Celsius. And I was like, ah. Oh, but I'm inside all day, but it's okay. And yesterday was beautiful and I was inside all day. Today is also beautiful, but I'm home, so. And I know summer's coming and basically like every time I work, I have like two weeks off in the summertime, so I'm okay with it. Missing a few days of sunshine Yesterday, like I said, I worked a 12 hour shift and when I came home, I, like my brain is basically mush. My husband was like, do you want to go for a walk? And I was like, you know what? I don't, I don't think I have the energy. <laughs> like I'm, I'm so exhausted. It's just, it's mentally, like my job is not physical, but it's mentally draining. You got to think all day. So... Came home and we watched, we watched two episodes, uh, like two, like we film all our stuff because we 
I don't like commercials, <laughs> so I like to DVR it and then we watch it later. And plus the night before, I went to bed early because I have to get up at 4.30 in the morning. So, um, so I work Thursday, so Wednesday night, obviously it's Survivor. So we watched Survivor last night. And then we watch, and this is a new show to us. Like we're, we're caught up, but we didn't start watching it right away. It's a new show that came out this year. It's called New, Am new Amsterdam. Oh my goodness, I love it. Anything medical, I absolutely love. And I don't know if it's because of what I, what I do. Like it has to do with medical, but I love all medical shows. So I love Grey's Anatomy. I love Chicago Med. I love New Amsterdam. And what else? There's quite a few that have medical and so anything that has to do like fire department, police shows. So I love Station 19, um, Chicago Fire, what else, Chicago PD, love all those. So we watched a couple of episodes of that and then I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for bed. <laughs> so I went to bed and I read because I'm reading a um, series right now that I absolutely love. Sorry, I had to take a drink of my coffee. Um, <clears throat> I'm reading a series right now that I absolutely love. It's by Mary E. Pearson. It is a young adult fantasy. The first book being The Kiss of Deception. And it's about a princess that is betrothed to someone that, you know, like back in the day, what they used to do, you know, it's they kind of choose, chose who you married and you had never met that person. And then you just had to go off and go to their kingdom and so on her wed wedding day, she flees and two people follow her. There is an assassin that was sent to kill her. And then there is the prince that was supposed, that she was supposed to marry. And when they both reach her, you don't know who the assassin is and who the prince is. And that's the first book. And then it just builds on that. And it is full of action. It is so good. I'm on the last book uh, of the series. It's called The Beauty of Darkness. I think I'm on page like 450-ish. And the book is 650 pages. So I'm about 200 pages away from the end of the series. So all I wanted to do was read the book and find out what's gonna happen, What find out what's gonna happen to my favorite characters. And I just couldn't, I read maybe 30 pages and I had to put the book down and go to bed. And uh, so today after I'm done my, what I need to do, so including this, because I wanna make sure that I have stuff done a long time in advance uh, my videos <clears throat> so as soon as I'm done this and you know laundry and folding the laundry and vacuuming and all that fun stuff I'm gonna go and read a good hundred pages hopefully and then maybe tonight when I go to bed then I can finish it I'm hoping So that was my day yesterday. Now, I asked in the last video if you had any questions to ask them, and then I would answer them in this video. So one of the, uh, I guess it wasn't a question, but it, I talked about how I'm set up and if I could film it. So at the beginning of this video, 
I did a little clip where I showed you my setup for filming, but I, I know I showed you my art easel and my light pad and all that stuff. Now somebody else asked what is a light pad. A light pad is used um, a lot by artists and they use it to trace, but it has found a new role. Um, as far as diamond painting, it is a light box basically and you can light it up and you can see the symbols really well. So that was another question. Another one asked, what is diamond painting? And I thought I mentioned it in the first video, but I'll mention it again. Uh, diamond painting uh, is on canvas. So this is a canvas and they print a pattern on the canvas. Now it can be in two, different types. You can have the round diamonds or you can have square diamonds. Now, if it's round, it's still basically a square. Sometimes they'll have like a, a circle pattern on them so you know exactly where the center of the square is to put your diamond. And then once you're done putting your diamonds, it does the picture that they've printed. So basically, it's like cross stitch, but on, you know, with little diamonds or paint by color. And instead of coloring all the little squares, you just apply a diamond. <clears throat> now when you, another question is, do you get everything you need when you buy a kit? When you buy a kit, you get a diamond painting pen. Sometimes you get the squishy, sometimes you don't. You get a tray, you get the wax, because this is how you put it on. Your canvas is sticky, I don't know if you can hear that. Now, these resins or diamonds are not sticky, so by putting the wax in your pen, when you touch the resin, it picks it up, because now you have wax, which is the sticky part in your pen, and then when you put it on your canvas, which, wait, I don't have any more percentage signs here, but I do set. When you put it, I don't have any percentage sign over there. I have some here, so I'll do it here. Um, when you put it down, because the canvas is sticky, it'll grab the diamond, and it's stickier than the, the wax in your pen, so then it just leaves it on your canvas. And then it's just relaxing. It's fun to do, you can do it, while you're watching TV. I personally like putting an audiobook on because then I don't have to lift my head, you know, to look at the TV and see what's going on. I just listen, so I love doing that. So, you know, if I get a bunch of things done and this is my break and I'll just put an audiobook on and I'll keep, you know, sort of reading my book. If my book has an audiobook, I'm a member of Scribd, so I get it's basically like unlimited uh, books per month. Now, I usually only listen to one book a month. I need to get another sip of coffee. I usually listen to only one book a month, and I read the rest either physically like a physical book or on my Kindle. I might start a second book on audiobook, but usually I can only get one in done. But I read between, depending on the month, between six and sometimes, you know, 12 books in a month, if it's a good month. Right now we are, what are we, April 12th? And I have, is it four or five books completed? Four or five. And I am, like I said, 200 pages away from finishing my next book, which was a big book. It was, you know, almost 700 pages. So, okay, so we'll just do a couple more of these and then we'll go on to the next question. because so I think I'm out of the viewfinder right now. So I'll change colors. Let me just make sure there's no percentage signs anywhere that I missed. 
I don't think so. So we'll close that up. We'll put this color away. And while I'm getting the next color, which will be, uh, what's up there? Y. And Y is 797, but I'll put the 3608 away first. While I'm doing that, I'll uh, talk about another question I got. Another question was um, that she had just gotten her first couple diamond, diamond painting, and she's wondering if when she's putting, you know, separating the diamonds, should she put them by DMC code, which is right here, or should she put it by the, col the number color? Well, I guess that's just a preference. If, um, if you only wanted to number these only once and you'd numbered them from 1 to 28, then you'd only have to number them once. And then instead of saying, I want color 797, I would go to color 16, which is a really smart way to do it. Um, I go by the DMC code. And I think it's only because because I keep um, my colors at the end, and it just makes it easy for me to when I'm oh my lanta I'm trying to open one of the bigger ones and oh it's hard I'm gonna need to put my pen down oh I don't know if I can open it that is weird because when I open them. There we go. Because um, <clears throat> I keep all my drills and it just makes it easier for me at the end when I'm making my little baggies to put them all away. It just makes it easier for me to put them away. But either way, I mean, I guess it's what works best for you. So this is color 797. It is like a nice navy. So I only have one up there. So that was another question. Now I have my cell phone next to me. Um, okay, so what company do you get your kits from? There's so many out there. How do you tell the good ones from the bad? That's a good question. Um, I mean, if you go on AliExpress, there is so many. And, you know, chances are you might get sort of burned because some of them are not good. And, you know, the, the way they print their canvas, you get a lot of bubbles and their diamonds are not good they have little burrs on the side so when you go to place them side by side especially if they're squares if they have little nubbins on the sides and you put the two of them together well eventually you get a little square done and if they don't fit perfectly they'll push up and that's what you call popping drills and that's very discouraging because you put all that time and then all of a sudden um, you know your drills are popping and uh, I did one <clears throat> before Christmas for my daughter. It was um, Harley Quinn, which the end result, I have to say, it looks beautiful. It doesn't pop anymore. I ended up with a ton of garbage that I had to throw away a lot of drills because there was no sense putting it on the canvas because they were just going to fly off because they, they were so bad. But I paid for it, so I just, you know, finished it. Um, the company was Drill Shiny. And I will never buy from them again because it was bad. You know, unless maybe, I shouldn't, never say never. I may. I may give them a try again and then see... You know, because maybe they were new and maybe they were just getting, you know, kind of situated and stuff. 
but I won't pay like $30 for a canvas. I'll just get like a smaller canvas and try them again. Because you know what? Anytime that you're new at something, there's growing pains. So yeah, I shouldn't have said never. Never say never. Um, but um, I guess it's just trial and error. And because some people, you know, uh, Hua Can, which is a very popular AliExpress company, they went through a rough period. And I ordered a smallish canvas. It was a 30 by 40. I had a few popping drills, but nothing bad. Nothing bad. And now the canvas is all done and it's staying together really nicely. So maybe their bad period is over. And I had bought some stuff from them way back. So I don't know if the stuff that I haven't worked on is going to be bad for me. That I don't know. <laughs> I bought sort of a diamond painting book. And I want to do like an inventory of all the diamond paintings I have. And I'd like to make myself sort of a little cue, like which ones I want to do first and next and that kind of stuff. Sort of like what I do for my reading. When I read, I make myself a TBR and TBR means to be read. I make a list of maybe 10 to 12 books per month. And then I read the books one by one. And usually that works out better for me. In March, I didn't do that. And I had the worst reading month of probably like a year and a half. Because I was like, ah, I didn't know which one. It would take me sometimes days to figure out which book I was gonna start next. And so it works better for me if, so I'm kind of thinking that's the same with my diamond painting. If, um, <clears throat> If I can figure out which one I'm going to do next, it would be better. Okay, so I started answering a question and I didn't finish. I go off on rabbit trails. So does everything come in the kit? Let me answer that question. <laughs> yes. You get your canvas, you get your pen, you get your boats or boat, you get your wax, and you get all the drills to complete your canvas. So it comes in a bag and you know they're all separated by color and then you have your key on the side and you have to make sure that you have everything in your kit. Um, so yes, you could literally order one of these and when it comes in, you could start doing your canvas. Now, is there stuff that makes it so that it's easier on you? Absolutely. Like the light pad. I personally could not do it without the light pad. I need the light in behind to be able to see the symbols clearly. Like, although like Diamond Art Club, their canvases are very clear. I can see them really. I can see the symbols very clearly. The symbols, they don't have a bunch of symbols that are similar and you're trying to figure out which symbol it is. Like there's none of that. But um, I would probably find that my eyes would get tired very quickly if I didn't have the light pad. Now there's different sizes of light pad. There's one that's called A4, and it's basically like an eight and a half by 11. And that's, I have one of those, and that's the one that I bring sort, sort of on the go. And then the one for home, because I wanted to put it on my um, art easel, I wanted a bigger one so that it would cover a bigger piece of the canvas so that I wouldn't have to keep moving it and moving it and moving it. Because what would happen is 
the small one, I would put stuff like some sticky stuff in behind my light pad and stick it to my, my board. But every time I lifted it, my heart would just like, <gasps> because I was almost pulling away because it's almost like a white, I can't even explain it, like the light, there's a white uh, sheet in behind that makes it so that it's so bright. Well, it was pulling that away from the light box. And I'm like, I'm gonna ruin this light pad because I keep, you know, because this is so high, I had to stick it here and then I had to stick it somewhere else. And I didn't like moving it. So I went and just bought this one and um, I have some sticky stuff. Oops, I just turned off my light pad. Um, I have some sticky stuff in behind this light pad, but um, I don't have to move it very often. Like I'll, I'll be able to do more than half of this um, canvas before I have to move it. And second, the back of this is different than the other ones, so I'm not pulling something away. It's like solid on the back, so because it was a little bit more money, it's better quality. And then, um, what else? There's, you know, different tools that you can, you can get. Um, A roller um, that you can get so that as you're finishing pieces of your canvas you can roll the roller on your diamonds to make sure that they're snapped down especially like the square ones so they snap into place and you can hear them like they they snap into place um, a diamond grinder because sometimes the diamonds less for rounds I think I think it still happens but I don't think it's as frequent with rounds but diamonds will be stuck together <clears throat> and if you put another tray on top and you push down you can get them to separate um, but they do sell diamond grinders that you can um, separate the diamonds and those work really well I have one of those and it works really well so there's a few tools like there's a diamond painting book like I said that you can keep an inventory basically like a little journal for your diamond paintings that you can put where you got it when you started it um, how long it took you to make it whether it's a square square or round um, I'm gonna start kind of keeping an inventory too. And I have a small printer, it's a LG Pocket. And what I'll do is I'll print off a small picture of each of my canvases and I'll put it on that page. I'll like stick it on that page, glue it on that page so that I can also see what the canvas, you know, what the picture looks like. And then there's another one, it's called Diamond Painting 911. And it's a book that you can glue down some of your drills so that you can see the colors. So you have basically like a log book. Oh, and there's also a DMC because this uses the DMC codes. You can get the regular DMC book, like floss book for the colors, like a chart. And then you can see the colors that way. I do have another video on my channel, you'll have to go back, but I call it, um, I think Diamond Painting 101 um, Tools and Lingo, and I talk about all that stuff and show some of the tools and all that good stuff. And then, um, totally forgot what I was going to say. Went right out of my head. I think that was the last of the questions. So for next time, if you have, you know, questions and stuff, just put them in the description box below.
and I'll answer them in the next diamond painting. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Uh, the lingo, it's like, you know, like the word whip. Like this is called a whip and chat. What does that mean? Whip means work in progress. So basically your work in progress and chatting. So I talk about the different lingos and all that stuff. And so if you're new to diamond painting, it's always nice to, to kind of have all the information in one one spot. I'm sure I forgot some stuff, but I tried to put as much information as I could in that one video. Okay, I need another drink of coffee. I am um, <clears throat> feeling much better, but I find once I, when I talk a lot, my throat gets really dry and then I start coughing. So yesterday, working all day, and you basically talk all day. Uh, yeah, my throat was pretty bad when I got home. <clears throat> Years ago, actually I had just started at uh, 911. Um, I went to a conference for 911. It was the one and only that I went to. I figured, I mean, they still have them every year, but I find it's good for, they, don't, they can only take a few people, and I find it's good for the new people to go because it kind of gives you, I don't know, an overview of what our job is and kind of gives you, you know, pride in, in what we do and all that stuff. So I had gone, and there was like a few of us that went. I think there was six of us that time that went. And there's different classes that you can take. And so we had signed up for a few of them. And one of them was, I um, can't remember exactly what the title of it was, but it talked about sort of like the, the stress that it puts on your body and everything. And one of the things that she talked about was our vocal cords. <clears throat> it's probably one of the most demanding jobs for your vocal cords because you're literally talking all day. Where um, a lot of places where they go from one call to another, they have a time in between their calls. It depends however much time. For us, when our phone company came and you know they changed our phone system this was like 12 years ago it was a long time ago and they put a delay and it was I don't know it was like 15 seconds and everybody was freaking out because it was like that's too long in between the 911s like I, I, I need to get the next call right away like what is this and they they started to laugh and they said wow we've never heard that you know Usually they ask for longer in between <laughs> the calls. So our time in between the calls is literally, I think it's like three seconds. So we hang up and it, it blinks one, two, three, and then it's available again because it's a 911. Like we cannot um, wait in between calls. So sometimes we can, it's, it's a long time you know, you can literally talk for your entire 12 hours. Ooh, that one is not a good one. So we'll get rid of that one. It's too small. So she was saying that it's really hard on your vocal cords. <clears throat> and she was even suggesting that, suggesting that, she said, you know, when you're on your days off, almost like a singer, you know, <laughs> Before they get ready for a concert, they, you know, they shouldn't talk and keep their voice. Well, she was saying that when on our days off, we should not talk a lot. And what do I do? I, you know, start a YouTube channel and I start making voiceovers. And <laughs> so sometimes I do... Um, lose my voice and 
<clears throat> almost every time I go to work, I a lot of times my voice goes right down to like a squeak and I have to get someone to run and you know get me some water. Usually I try to remember to bring a glass of water with me as soon as I go in. I'm pretty good now. I remember almost every time, but if my water goes down, I have to make sure to ask someone to run and get me water because we just can't leave our station. Just get up and go. If I'm dispatching, somebody has to replace me. And so sometimes our supervisor, they have like a minute and they can, they'll go in and do that kind of stuff for us. So that, you know, the only time we have to get up is if we need to go to the bathroom. Um, so there was, um, I forgot what I was saying. Oh, so she was saying that, you know, this is uh, really, really, really hard on our vocal cords. <clears throat> so if you hear me, I'm, I'm sorry that I keep kind of trying to clear my throat. But that is partially because of that. The other reason that I have that is because when I was 25, I had cancer and I had radiation right in my throat. And um, five years later, I went to nose, ear, throat specialist because I kept, especially in the morning, and this is morning right now, especially in the morning, I feel like I always have something, you know, stuck or my throat feels irritated that's a better word for it it feels irritated and he told me that for the rest of my life it was going to be like that because I had radiation and um, you know if you've ever had radiation somewhere you can never have radiation in that spot ever again that's how much it burns the tissues inside and everything um, I mean, it, it cures you, but it also damages, damages to the point that you can never have radiation in that spot again. So you got, you know, me talking a lot yesterday, and then you have that. That's kind of normal for me. And then, is that, please tell me, is that a V? No. Oh, okay. Whew. There is a V, but it's blue. They should never do a Y and a V. I'm trying to find the V on the canvas. Okay. So it looks totally different. For a second, my heart, because I'm so far away from these, I'm like, is that a V? But it's, no, it's a, still a Y. Is there anything else that's really close to it? Because when it's this small, from the distance that I'm at, because again, I'm not right over it, I was like, oh no. Yeah, that's a Y. Okay, I just needed to make sure, because <clears throat> I wouldn't want to start all that over again. Okay. And plus, like, how do you figure out which ones you put in the wrong spot? So on my phone, yeah, I did put like an hour timer because the last time I did a video, uh, the whip and chat, I had no idea how long it was going to be. Now it ended up being an hour and 24 minutes. So a little bit more than an hour, but not too, too bad. But it's something that you can get totally immersed in and then you can totally forget how long you've been doing this. So I have other stuff to do today, but I wanted to get this done first thing so that it's done and ready. So 
again, I don't just work in one. If, if I open a color, I try to use it as much as possible. Now maybe if I, you know, if it was a different canvas and there was like really specific, really big color blocks, I might do it differently. I think it, def it depends on the canvas that I'm working on. And I try to change it up to just to make it more interesting. Center one didn't want to get off. There we go. So I can't remember what I was talking about. Oh, I think I was just talking about how she kind of warned us to to try to save our voice. <clears throat> And um, they also, I also, um, someone was telling me that when I go to work and I lose my voice like that, it's a sign, oh, I took away the wrong one. So I'll put it there so I can put it back. And it's this one. They have tweezers, <laughs> but I forgot to bring them with me, so I'll just take it off. Oops, I didn't pick it up. Oh, because it was on the canvas, now it's got glue in the back, and it's making it difficult for me to pick up. Let's see if I can Put it down. There we go. Close enough. There we go. Um, that that is a sign of um, PTSD, which when I talked about yesterday that I had lost it a couple years ago and I was just bawling. And like I said, it was nothing to do with a call, nothing to do, like, it was just something that was going on at work that really shouldn't have bothered me as much as it did, but <laughs> it did. And I can tell you being now about three months away from being home, well, part-time for two years, and again yesterday, someone that because I'm not there often. And yesterday wasn't my regular shift. I switched with someone because she was looking for someone to switch with her because she wanted to go on vacation and she couldn't get the days off. So I switched with her. She worked one of my shifts and I worked hers yesterday so that she could go on vacation. Um, so it was a team that I don't normally work with and one of the girls was like, oh my goodness, like, you look so good, like, what are you doing? And I'm like, um, part time. <laughs> I, I've had literally some people say to me, like, we're so happy that you decided that because you did not look healthy. We were afraid for you. Like, we were afraid that something bad was going to happen. So it was, it was the time and I still have like nightmares and stuff and not as often now. Usually now it's about two to three days before I go back to work. It still causes me anxiety to go to work, but I, I love it. It's just this darn body can't handle it anymore. But as long as I can do the three shifts and then have two days off, I'll I'll keep doing it. Okay. Well, we did quite a bit. <clears throat> There's some more up there. I don't know how much 
time is left before it's going to be an hour. I still have like a good 15 minutes. So what else could I talk about? Okay, well maybe I talked about my job yesterday, but I didn't um, talk about like me personally. So my name is Nicole and I've been married 20, I laugh because I'm the worst for remembering, 27 years? It'll be 27 in June. We've been together, it'll be 28 in June. And fun fact, we met June 18th. So I guess it'll be 26 in June. It'll be 27, I don't know. <laughs> we met June 18th, 1992, and we got married. At least I remember that. We got married June 18th, 1993. So exactly a year later. And another fun fact is I met my husband when I had cancer. I met him in June and I had started, <clears throat> I had found out in February. So about six months into sort of my treatments and, and all that stuff. And uh, we got married a year later. I finished my treatments in December. So he was there for, you know, with me for half of it. And that's pretty awesome for someone to even start dating someone that is undergoing treatments because you never know what's going to happen. A girl I knew um, had just gotten married maybe five months before she got, after she got married and was diagnosed with cancer and her husband left her so it can have you know the opposite effect right so it's pretty um it's pretty amazing that i knew he was a keeper let me put it that way <laughs> and we've been married ever since and we have three kids uh the first one I don't know if that diamond's bad or I can't tell. Um, first one is 31. And if you do the math, you're gonna know that um, you said 27 years. It's because my first one was from a previous um, relationship. And then we have Two other kids. My middle daughter is um, 25 and my son is 19. But being the amazing husband that my husband is, my oldest daughter is his daughter. Like he came into her life and she was four, going on five. So he's been her dad. Okay, is there any more of those? And she says so too. Oh, I see one. And we've never said, you know, half sister, or anything like that. It's always been brother, sister, no half. Um, awesome. Oh, no, oh, a couple more. And my oldest daughter has a son and he's Mason. And if you know that, um, 
you're here from my scrapbooking, you know that I scrapbook Mason a lot. <laughs> He's six years old. He's quite a ham. We have him quite a bit. If he doesn't see us, he just like calls and says, but I miss you. I want to come to your house. So he's here quite a bit on the weekends. Now he goes to school. So during the week, he doesn't see us. And then on the weekend, we usually have him at least one night. Some weekends we don't, but almost every weekend. And then my daughter, my oldest daughter is going to school for an, being an accountant. So it gives her a little break and gives her time to, on Sundays, she'll go and, and uh, meet some kids from her class and they will do their homework and stuff like that. So projects, she's doing really well. She's doing in the 90s, so. Okay, what is that sign? Oof, I don't know if I can, oh, it's that, which is a circle and then a triangle inside. I think that's the same. Because it doesn't have the light pad up there, it's really hard to tell. You know what, I'll start with these and then when I turn the camera off, I'll check to see if that's the same and if it is, I'll just put it on. So 5.50. So my middle daughter, um, she got married in October. She says she doesn't want any kids. This is a deep purple. She's happy being an auntie. And she coaches um, cheerleading and she loves being, she loves doing that. She uh, came home after a competition. She was showing me some pictures and you know, they had won a trophy. I think it was third place and big smiles on the kids. And she looks at me and she goes, mom, this is why, this is why I coach. She goes, I just love it, um, their smiles and stuff. She coaches eight to 12 year olds and the parents are so good to her. Really good to her. Well, they, you know, they can tell. She's 25 years old. She dedicates a lot of time a week coaching the girls. And then when they have competitions, She's a manager of a store, so she has to work a lot of weekends. So the only weekend she takes off is um, she dedicates to the kids. So she goes away to competitions. So the parents see that, you know, they, they go to the competitions too, like with their kids. And then they say, you know, like, thank you so much for the time that you give to our kids because... She's 25 year old, you know. <laughs> I think they think there's a lot of other stuff she could be doing with her time, but she loves it, so she loves doing that. And my son is 19 and he's an artist, so he's going to art school. He's got a couple more months left. He's going right now, he's doing um, game designing. So we will see, it's a hard, it's a hard field, right? <clears throat> but that's what his heart wanted and that's what he wanted. So we supported him. He's really good too. If he wants it hard enough, right? He can make it happen. So those, are, and like I said, Mason, he's six. He's going, he's in kindergarten. He loves hockey. 
He was so sad at hockey. This was his first year that he played hockey. Like he's been on skates since he was one and a half. But this was the first year he played hockey and he absolutely loved it. He was so, so sad when it ended. And uh, so we're gonna probably put him in hockey school this summer. We just want to take a break for spring hockey. Plus it was almost $500 for 10 sessions. We're like, um, yeah, we'll just wait and we'll put him in summer hockey, you know, put some money away so we can pay for it. <laughs> and then, um, then he'll start again in September with regular season, but he's gonna play soccer this summer. He's already all enrolled and everything, so. He's looking forward to that, but he doesn't he doesn't like soccer as much as he loves hockey. And my husband coaches him for soccer and for hockey, which he absolutely loves. Like since he was little, I'm sure like he could talk quite a bit when he was two, and he was like, So Pappy, when I start, you know, playing hockey and stuff, you're gonna be my coach, right? Because my husband was my son's coach for hockey when he played hockey, and he was my daughter's coach when she played soccer. She played soccer for like nine or 10 years. And it was a soccer team here, our little town that's close to us. So he coached the same girls for, cause it's a small community. So it was the same girls. There was only one team. So it was the same girls for, I don't know, nine years, 10 years. And it's funny now, because now we see them out and about in our community, and they're like, oh, Coach Dave. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> so now he's coaching Mason. And I'm sure that's why my daughter, you know, she saw how much my husband loved coaching. And it kind of made it that she wanted to coach kids and have a, you know, be a role model for kids. So, so that is my whole family. I guess the next thing I could talk about since I don't have any more uh, questions or anything is my hobbies. What do I like to do with my time? Well, I would have to say number one is scrapbooking and that has to do with pictures and everything. So if you don't know what scrapbooking is, just go to some other uh, videos on my channel and, and uh, you know, a lot of them are called scrapbook process and it has to do with photos and you, you know, kind of make the pages look all pretty and you document your your life and your kids' stories and stuff. And the other thing I really like to do is I love to read. Last year I read 121 books in one year. Now what type of books do I like to read? I like to read um, young adults, young adult books, adult books, um, thrillers. Um, I don't mind. I love contemporaries, whether it's young adult, adult. Um. <clears throat> oh, here, I'm going to give you a little tip because right now I was talking and I forgot what sign I was doing. When I open a color, I leave the container open like this. So then if I forget, I just go and look at the number and then I can go, oh, okay, that, that was the sign I was doing. So that's just a little tip because if something happens and I get distract, distracted, I come back, uh, I would come back and I'd be like, oh, what color was I doing? <laughs> and then if you have a tray full and you're trying to figure out which color it is, it can be, you know, when you're trying to match it up to other colors, it can be difficult to do. Anyway, little rabbit trail again. Um, so 
basically the only types of books that I'm not interested in. Now I will say again, never say never, because lately I bought one of those books. Um, I usually don't like autobiographies. I, because of the job that I have, it is so serious. You know, it's like not fun stuff. When I read, I want to be taking taken away to a different land, a different realm, a different, you know. So I like fantasy, I like sci-fi, I like contemporary, a good little love story, you know. You know it's how it's going to end, you know, but you know what? I I don't mind. I um I just like the way they got there, you know. I just love a good story. But I usually don't like autobiographies, but after I read Daisy Jones and the Six, and it totally reminded me of Stevie Nicks and Fleetwood Mac. And then somebody had said in one of my videos, I read that and I didn't get that vibe. Um, if you remember Stevie Nicks, she would go on stage bare feet. And she was very much, uh, you know, flower power kind of thing. <laughs> and um, so that's why it reminded me of her in Fleetwood Mac. And then when I went to Book Outlet, and Book Outlet is a place where you can get really cheap books. They have bookoutlet.ca and they have bookoutlet.com. I'll have a link in the description box below uh, where you can uh, just click and see the, the books that you can, they're really cheap. Anyway, I was on there one day and I saw an autobiography of for Stevie Nicks and I'm like, uh, yes, please, because I want to know more about Stevie Nicks' story. So I don't know when I'll read it, but I did buy it. It was kind of cheap, so I ended up buying that. So those, normally I don't like autobiographies and I don't like horror books. I don't like horror movies, so why would I like horror books, right? I don't like to be frightened out of my mind. <laughs> don't like it at all. Um, now I did purchase on Kindle one that they, it, I guess it's considered in the genre. I didn't have one on my pen there of horror, but Heather from Bookable said she read it and she's a big chicken <laughs> like I am. And she said that it, you know, it wasn't that bad so and it's about mermaids and that kind of stuff so I think I might be able to handle it but I just got it on Kindle so and it was on sale one day it was like you know a few dollars so I decided to to get it and try it out but I don't think I'm not a, I'm not a Stephen King fan fan for example because I find it too scary so I um, those are the genres that I love to read. I love series because same as a, I think that's why I like TV shows better than I like movies because I love that you get the characters for a long period of time. So it's if it's a TV show and it's like seven seasons, well, you get to be with those characters for a long time. Um, so I think I'll do one more color and then we'll call it for today. My timer went off. Um, I caught it just before it started ringing. So I know I'm over an hour, just a little bit. <clears throat> but I'll just finish what I'm talking about now and then I'll finish it off. So this is 917. And it's a deep pink. So I can't tell. A deep pink. I can't tell if you can tell this the color really well. Um, I tried to put my art easel down so I'd be flat and maybe, you know, try to hunch over for an hour. But because I'm at my countertop and I have lights like right there, then the light would reflect. So I might buy that light that I was saying so that I can have a light that I can direct it where I want it to go and attach it to this. I don't know. 
we'll just do it like this for a little bit and uh, see if I want to change it. Okay, so the types of books. So basically anything except autobiographies and horror and lately I've gotten one of each. So like I said, never say never. You just never know what um, you might like. Now my goal for this year is to read a hundred books. Like I said a while ago, we're April 12th and I have 26 books read, I think. And on my Goodreads, uh, and if you don't know what that is, that's a place where you can keep track of the books that you read, you can rate them, you can um, you know, write comments on how you liked it, you can rate them on a scale from one to five, but you can also find some good books on there because people, um, you know, write reviews on them and so and they're separated by genres so you can you know if you know you like a spe specific genre you can look for books in that genre and then there's a spot that you can find the new releases for every month of the year for you know 2018 2019 so it's a great resource place well on that on goodreads it says that I'm one book behind <laughs> because I had such a bad month of reading for March. So I'm hoping in April, I'm gonna catch up. Like I said, I'm gonna finish one today or tomorrow, but it seems every time I finish one, it still says, oh, you're still one book behind because I, you know, every few days I'm probably supposed to finish a few books. So hopefully I can catch up this month. But like I said, I read a pretty big book it's almost 700 pages, so that's almost two and a half books, right? If they were only 300 pages. Next couple books, I think, that I have it, that I have sort of in my queue. I think they're a little shorter. They're about, oh no, the next one that I started has about 400, which is better than 450, I think. Better than 650, but it's still... Not a small book. The one after that I think is 320 or something. But So I used to watch way more TV shows, but ever since I started reading, I spend more time reading that I like, that I watch TV shows. I watch TV shows with my husband every night. We'll, you know, watch one or two episodes without commercials. So that means instead of an hour, it's 45 minutes. So we usually watch two in an hour and a half. And um, we watch, like I said, a lot of, we love Survivor, we love Big Brother, we love reality TV. But I think that those are the only two really that we watch that's reality TV. We watch Big Brother, the the States ones, and then we watch Big Brother Canada, and then we watch Survivor. Oh, and we love The Amazing Race, but it hasn't been on for a bit, unless we missed it. I hope we didn't miss it. <clears throat> but we love Amazing Race. That is one reality show that I would love to do. And I think I'd be okay with doing all the stuff because you know, one of the things they did was zip lining, and I was like, oh, I don't know if I could do that. Well, I've done zip lining, and I loved it. Another one was to walk, like, on a tight rope across, you know, something, and I'd be like, oh, I don't know if I'd have enough strength. Well, I did that a few summers ago. It was a uh, tree go, and it was quite far, and it was quite high off the ground, and I did it. And, um, and I was like, oh, okay, I, I, can, I can do this. <laughs> So that's probably one of the reality show that would I would love to do, just because of all the traveling. Survivor, I love watching it, but I would not want to do it. No thank you, all the bugs and the weather, like outside and ugh, not eating, sleeping on the ground, no thanks. But I love watching it. And I love watching stuff on Netflix, like 
usually same as um, for my books. I love watching something that the whole season is there because I love to binge watch it. I will start it and I will watch the whole thing. Um, so maybe next time I'll talk about some of the shows that I've watched on Netflix that I've really loved and I've watched the whole thing. So I'll make a list of the shows that I've watched on Netflix and I can talk about some of the shows that I really, really liked. Okay, well, we did quite a big section. I want to keep going. This is, I, love, I enjoy doing this. I think, though, I'll finish it off right here because it's going to be about an hour and, again, 20 minutes. <laughs> and, again, leave some questions in the description box below, and I'll answer them in the next Whip and Chat. And... I just want to thank you for watching and subscribing, and we will talk to you soon. Bye.